you know. Um, yeah, so approaches like baseline, starting with a baseline, seeing what you can do with that. This would be like an exercise. Okay. You know, hit three notes. And try to come up with a melody. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, taking... Oh, another thing is uh, the six chords of the chord family template, right? Um, remember I showed you there are classic patterns, you know, one four five four, one six two five, right. or, or blah, 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 blah. There's all the different... One, five, six, four is very big, um, and so on and so forth. Every once in a while, somebody will come up with a combination of those six chords that I've never heard before. Really? And yeah, it's it's possible to do. It's <laughs> you know, and uh, I'm always so impressed with that. Like, wow, this person came up with a an interesting slant on that. You know. Mm -hmm. um, like the chorus of Wonderwall goes from C. And I thought that was a very interesting use of, of, of the chords within the template. Um, I've never seen that motion before. Oh, okay. All right. So that's another approach, like shuffling around some of these chords. So, you know, you'll get a moment. You'll get a moment where it'll go, oh, oh, I like this one. You know, this, this one's cool, this arrangement. Write it down. And then C, sometimes, you know, there's a guitarist, Eric Johnson. Yeah. Um, I don't totally buy his idea, but he says that a chord is actually, it, it, if you play a chord, it contains a melody within it. Okay. Like somehow there's a melody inside of this chord. Now, I don't thoroughly believe that because there are any number of melodies that could come out of a chord. There can't be just one. Yeah. Um, but this idea that, you know, you can hit a chord and sit and listen to that chord. And if you just, like, take in the, the vibration and the feeling of the chord, you could start to feel the melody can, can start to come into your mind. It stri strikes me that you could also take off from every note in that chord, each individual note, and see where that took you. You could start on, on, on a different individual note and see where, where it'll take yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about uh, way back when, I know I have the notes for it, uh, you went through the different modes and you gave examples of songs that were done in that mode. Right, right, right. And there were some that you said were very strong. Right. And others that were very weak. Yeah. Is that in the within the chord family template? Yes. Is, does that also apply? Yes. Yes. In other words, the, the strong modes in the chord family <laughs> in other words, the root chord you want to start on. Yeah. Will either be the one chord, the two chord, the five chord or the six chord. There are actually four. The truth of the matter is there are four usable modes in pop music. All right. Okay. I just chose the Ionian, the Dorian, the Mixolydian, and the Aeolian. And they are numbers? One. Right. Two minor. Okay. Five. Okay. And six minor. Six minor. Okay. Right. Um, the, the three and the four have weak roots, and the, the seven has no root. Huh. All right. Okay. I, I've proved this before about the seven. That's why I put it in parentheses. Right. I don't mean the sev dominant seventh chord. I mean the sev the chord built on the seventh step of the template. Of the template. That's okay. That's often confusing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, it's not like th those weak ones have never been used, but they just are rarely used. What? Oh, well, as I said before, they're used. It's just that they're not used in pop music. You'll find it in jazz, and okay. uh, you know, from maybe the Romantic period on in classical. You know, okay. like say the Lydian mode has a raised fourth, you know, so instead of you get okay. Now the nature of that broken fourth makes the root very weak. Okay. All right, but you know you, the um, uh, what is it? Uh, Oh, damn, I can't remember the melody now, but Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn. Um, I believe the melody starts in a whole, se whole steps like that, and it outlines actually a, a Lydian, a 
Lydian melody. So it was using classical. A Lydian chord is like this. And a way to fake, you know, do fake jazz is take a Lydian chord. This is a G major seven, but I'm flatting the fifth, which makes it a raised fourth as well. Either way you want to look at it. And to play fake jazz, you just take this chord and move it around. <laughs> and what is the name of that chord again? Uh, this is a major seven, uh, major seven flat five. Major seven flat five. Okay. Yeah. What What's the Hendrix chord? And, and that is the, the... That's a sharp nine. Just a sharp nine. Or seven sharp nine. Seven sharp... Okay, see, see, there's all these different... E7 e sharp nine. E7 sharp nine, is. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a dominant seventh chord with an added sharp nine. The reason why you have to say E7 sharp nine and not E sharp nine mm -hmm. is uh, how do you know it's not E sharp, an E sharp chord with a ninth on it? Okay. Or let's look at G because there's no such thing as E sharp, you know, uh -huh. except theoretically. Um... A G7 sharp 9, right? Okay. As opposed to G sharp 9. Okay. That could be a G sharp chord with an added ninth. Okay, G sharp show, 9. show me on the fretboard. Oh, all right, here's a G7 sharp 9. Okay. And here's a, a, a G add 9. Okay, it was the whole. There's a G, whole. A G sharp add 9. Right, but so, there's, there's a whole uh, shift in there. Oh, yeah. Ear wise, yeah. yeah. And even just sitting here, you know, we're on the subject of songwriting and chord movement. Well, okay. oh, there's something to that. Maybe, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it has a vaguely Latin, yeah. you know, sort of Latin feel to it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, now I was talking about, like, intuitive songwriting, you know, where you wake up one day and you just start writing a song. It just comes out of you, as mm -hmm. they say, you know. I've had that happen a number of times. I've, I've written songs in my dreams. Much to my chagrin, I never remembered them long enough to like actually write the songs. But um, uh, those incidents would occur to me when my mind was, like for weeks on end, has been deeply involved in creating songs. There was a time in my life when I was writing pop songs, like I'd, I'd try to churn one out like every day, you mm -hmm. know, but that's all I would do. It, um, it was a habit for a long, long time, you know. Oh, man. And what happens when you do that kind of obsessive, you know, concentrating, trying to get something out, trying to get something out, is just one day something just kind of happens effortlessly. That's the kind mm -hmm. of Zen paradox thing going on where all of a sudden it just happens. There's no effort involved. Is this going on in your brain or is this something that you will also do uh, audibly where you will sing whatever that is coming to you? Audibly in my brain, depending on circumstance, you know, if I was on a subway train, I wouldn't start singing out loud, but, you know, uh, you know, I would construct melodies in my head. Sometimes I'd write them down on paper. You oh, know, okay, so you, you're talented enough that you can write notes down. Yeah, it's, yeah. Blue. It's, okay. it's odd. I'm a terrible reader, but I'm a good writer. I could write really fast, but I can't oh, read. Okay. You know, I'm very slow at reading. All right. Yeah. Um, then, another thing that we mentioned along the way with songwriting is that usually the title is found in the bridge. Is that... The title is found in the chorus. In the chorus, rather. I'm like sorry. For, you know, here's an example, like Octopus's Garden. I'd like to be... This is a verse. I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. Da -da 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 we could be so happy. That's a bridge. So it actually the verse is the chorus. It is okay right? because you have the hook in there. Octopus's garden is the hook line. Okay. Right? Okay. And we ran into this the other day too. Uh, w the last time we got together, we ran into this with another song where where the verse is actually the chorus. Right. You know. Uh, Norwegian wood. I once had a girl, or should I say, she was in. We uh, isn't a good Norwegian wood. It, it's like the period at the end of that statement. Okay. It's also the song title, so that has to be the chorus. Okay. She asked me to stay, and she told me to sit anywhere. Da -da -da, and didn't notice it. That's a bridge. It's that's going leaving that really quickly. You could feel mm -hmm. that. It, it's you know temporal. But then we come back. Uh, I sat on a road by my time dream and we talked to Lou, and then she said. Uh, the uh, final verse does again contain this Norwegian one line, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a verse that's a chorus. It's got the... So they broke kind of some of the, the guideline rules, for better lack of... They didn't break any rules there. It was That was done in folk music a whole bunch. Oh, wow, well, okay. Oh, old folk music does that a lot, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and what other questions was I... 
You know what, um, um, for the viewer or listener, uh, I, I've gone to a thing called Song School in Colorado uh, in August for the last three years. And, of course, there's all these songwriters that are sitting around and all these classes that are given and stuff. An interesting thing, you brought up Dylan. Evidently, one of the guys who does furious research, and older, he's uh, maybe a little younger than me, claims that Dylan's first at couple albums were literally the translated poems of a Japanese poet. Oh, yeah, I heard this kind of like a scandalous... Uh... Yeah, and that Dylan has never denied it. Oh, really? But, yeah, he, I guess he's never really... He just sort of, you know, lets it go. But, yeah, uh, evidently his... Those early two... I loved early Dylan. I like early Dylan better than I like later Dylan. Yeah, me too. Um, but... But that was a crusher, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, that that's the thing, though. I mean, really, all music is built on what people have done in the past. Exactly. So you know, I wouldn't be a guitar player if it wasn't for Eric Clapton and the Beatles, too. Yeah. You know, it's like, you sure. know. That, and I ripped off all their licks and learned all their stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, my thing is, I do like to have a little bit of integrity. So, uh, you know, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take the lick, learn it, because I think it's cool. But then I'll tweak it in a way that is different than uh, the way they did it, so I could make it mine. All right. You know. Let me ask you something Something else. Like, we can go through the, the chord template on a song. Do you ever do something like, how can I make that particular chord, how can I expand that chord, uh, or in some cases maybe reduce it down to just, you know, oh, it, it isn't a even a point. chord yeah, where it's, take it in, where it's yeah. two notes or mm -hmm, something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, how can I expand that chord from being what it is within the chord template, yeah, the straight okay. away? All right, so, um, you know, when I'm working with students, when we begin the real deep step into music theory, that's harmony study. Okay. okay? The real, the one, one thing I always say is, like, if you were to take the elements rhythm, melody, and harmony, you'd say rhythm is belongs to the body. The body dances to the rhythm, moves okay. when you tap your foot when you hear music. Uh -huh. The heart would actually be melody. All right? You sing your heart out. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't sing your mind out. You sing your heart out. Okay. Okay? And that's a melodic line. Now, this goes back to how this, the fact that the scale was tempered and it made infinitely complex our sense of harmony after the scale was tempered because we can introduce chords from all 12 different keys and mess around. Okay. That became an intellectual function. So harmony is intellectual. That's where you hear all the geeky music theory talk. It's truly just about harmony. So now when we talk about harmony, there are two directions of study. There's horizontal and vertical. What you're asking about is vertical. Horizontal study, if you take the template, and you go, and then you put together a bunch of chords, that was just off the cuff, oh, right. that, that could be a chorus to something, oh, sure. you know, all right, but what it is, is I'm, I'm chain linking chord to chord to chord to chord. This is moving in time. This is horizontal motion of chord to chord to chord. Okay. The analogy I always give is driving along Lake Shore Drive in Chicago. A new building comes up as you as you round the corner, you know, around the circle. You see a new building come up, a new building come up. Each of these are chords. Okay. Right? Vertical harmony is the study. Now, this is the question you're asking. How can I tweak a chord in my progression? Okay. So you don't want necessarily, uh, I mean, you want those chords, right? but you want to colorize them. Okay. So you can do, well, I don't want to do that, that's too okay. much. Okay, sort of an America sort of treatment or something. Yeah, that's an America treatment, especially that major seventh at the end. I'd, I'd be happy with the, just the triad. Okay. All right, all those you know variations on chords I did, it's not variations on the chords, because I'm still doing E minor, C, D, and G. Okay. But in this case, E minor 7, in this case, C major 7, okay. in this case, D11 instead of D7, and then, you know, G whatever I, I chose. Well, now, and I, this is going to be from very beginner persons, but then these other things we've talked about, 
forgetting like you know parallel minor and all that sort of thing I'm talking about just sort of your basic template and working off that without it being unbelievably sophisticated right okay all right it's just so I don't know it just uh, again I think my ear needs to I, I have a keyboard at, at home now and I, I need to like be able to hear some of those things mm -hmm. on a keyboard and to implant them in my brain that that's yeah. what, that's what that particular chord sounds like. Yeah, I mean, building chords on a piano is much much easier than on a guitar, you know, because you could see the thirds. And Even the others. <laughs> 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 all right. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm creating a G major chord. Oh God, that's so out of tune. Okay. Right. Now uh, that's uh, you know in the key of C. I'm going up to the fifth step. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Building the chord. One, three, five. Build up to seven, build up to nine. Oh God, this. Yeah. Okay, there's a ninth chord, but then you might want to know what a sharp nine sounds like, so you raise that ninth a half step. Uh, yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Let me see, maybe C is better. Okay. <coughs> and that's just with a nine sharp. Yeah, or flatted. Okay. Or flatted with a thirteenth. It's so out of tune. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> it's an atonal piano. <laughs> uh, yeah, five. To give you that sense, uh, nine, sharp nine, okay. flat nine, flat nine, thirteen. Okay. Okay, now, clearly on guitar, it's much, much harder to build these chords. Okay. <coughs> I just got a new student the other day, and uh, he told me his last teacher said to him, if you really want to be a great guitar player, you have to learn piano. And I said, that's a good teacher. Ah. My favorite drummers in the world are the drummers that can play piano. Yeah. Huh. Piano is, is the ultimate teacher. It contains all the laws of music. It's just sitting there, waiting to be discovered. Okay. Um, I, any musician, any musician I would recommend learn piano learn and you don't have to be like don't learn classical piano or learn how to play list or yeah. you know whatever what you want to do is learn the 12 keys on the principles of music theory learn how to build the chords of all 12 keys uh -huh. look at the structure of these chords you know really notice oh this is two whole steps right here okay works every time no matter what key I'm in it's always two whole steps from the root to the third in this chord okay uh, get to that and then start building chords, extending chords, you know, then learn how to play, you know, the chords in every key, you know, and every key like that. And then, you know, you can start building on concepts I've taught you, like what is the secondary dominant of this chord, or what is the tritone substitution of that secondary dominant, things like this. Okay, all right, now right. that, that makes sense. I have to, I've had that keyboard covered with stuff for ages, and it just accumulates stuff on top of it, Yeah, yeah so yeah. it's not... What I need to do is clear it off. Clear it off, yeah. And have it hit one button, turn it on, and go. You know, right, sure, sure, thing. sure. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, that's a bad habit of mine. Um, listen, let's, for right now, let's stop this lesson, and then it, can we take look at that one song yeah. that I sent you, and, uh, and we'll record <coughs> that. But then this will just be hints for songwriters, or whatever you want to call it, or if right. you want to put it up, you don't have to, whatever. But... Uh, some valuable stuff today with Mr. Vincent, and we'll catch up next lesson. Bye-bye.